Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic Inex Real Maths video. In this video we're taking a look at how we might derive de Mauvoir's theorem um, quickly. Not not a thorough proof, you know, you, uh, there's not going to be an actual, uh, you know, really thorough proof. Um, you can you can prove it uh, somewhat thoroughly, you can prove it for um, all natural numbers um, using induction and potentially we'll do that in the future. But for now this is going to be a quick video proving de Mauvoir's theorem um, basically what it is this what this theorem is is it states that if you have some complex number cos x plus i sine x to the power and you raise that complex number to the power of n where n can be any real number that you want then that's actually the same thing it's equal to identical to cos n x plus i sine n x as as i've written there that right there is de Mauvoir's theorem now you might be wondering again complex numbers what's the point you know what what does any of this even mean turns out you can use this theorem to prove many trigonometric identities um, which are exclusively real so it's nothing to so you, these identities when they come out when you're finished with them they have no complex numbers left over totally real so they these things this formula for example this this theorem is incredibly important for things that actually are not related to complex numbers or at least don't seem to be um, and this is a very easy thing to actually derive um, we just need one other formula and that's going to be Euler's formula uh, so what we'll do is we'll put that down and we'll begin to derive de Mauvoir's theorem again this is not going to be a thorough derivation of de Mauvoir's theorem uh, we'll save that for another video but this is a quick one so all we need is to know uh, that's and this is Euler's uh, identity Euler's formula it states simply that e where e is Euler's number so you know 2.71 and so on uh, to the power of i where i is the square root of minus one times uh, theta I'll actually use x because we're using x's right now but it doesn't matter what it is it could be x theta anything that's going to be identical to cos x plus i where again i is the square root of minus one sine x just like that that's Euler's identity Euler's formula you might see it with theta but again it doesn't doesn't matter okay so essentially all we want to do is we want to know what happens when we raise this guy on the right hand side to the power of n so we want to do so using Euler's identity we can just raise both sides to the power of n so we get cos x plus i sine x all raised to the power of n is equal to e to the power of i x also raised to the power of n just like that all we've done is we've taken Euler's identity and we've raised both sides to the power of n where again n can be any real number that you like doesn't matter what the number is okay and then we can simply expand so what I'll do is I'm going to move the orders around I'm going to write the stuff on the right on the left now just be, just for simplicity so we end up with cos x plus i sine x this would be an absolute pain to actually expand uh, especially if x uh, if especially if n was very large so we want to leave that like that and we're saying that's identical to and all we have to do now is e to the i x to the power of n but again we can use index laws here as we've seen many times before using complex numbers e to the i x to the power of n when you have something that's got an exponent in brackets and then it's raised to another exponent those those two indices those exponents multiply together so all we get is e to the i n x okay just like that the actually this uh when euler um came up with this this uh, actually stands for inexorable videos i'm just joking of course it doesn't but um no that's what we get right so e to the i x to the power of n is i n x doesn't matter which order you write those three letters but i'm writing it in that order for a specific reason you'll see in a sec so i n x e to the i n x what is e to the i n x though because we can just go back and use euler's relation again so what we get is that cos x plus i times sine x to the power of n is identical to and again just using Euler's relation this time your theta is kind of just nx so this is going to be cos 
and the argument, the uh, you know the angle inside of the trigonometry, is this thing, right? It's nx. So we simply replace with nx, and we go back into Euler's identity, just like this. And if you actually look at that, cos x to the i sine x to the power of n is identical to cos nx plus i sine nx. That actually is de Mauvoise theorem. We finished. That's it. That's everything. So all you have to do is you have to take, you have to use Euler's formula and you have to bring the whole cos and i sine into the exponential world, e to the i x, um, raise both sides to the power of n, expand things out, do some simple algebra really, and there you are. It's actually not a difficult formula to derive. So uh, yeah, in the future we'll do a more sort of rigorous proof of this because I wouldn't say this is particularly rigorous. Uh, but this is actually very important and we will probably use this regardless of whether we do a rigorous proof of it or not. I'm sure this will come up again in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.